Howdy folks, Kirk and Jay here with Kirk Giordano Plastery. Today, what we're going to do, we're going to show you how to do this whole wall right here. Of course, Jay is going to use his fast motion, fast set on the camera, as we don't want it to be too long, but this will take Jay and I at least an hour to do both coats. Keep in mind, we're professionals. Also, this fellow, he did his own lath. He watched our videos and he did a nice job. Did he need to caulk every staple hole or nail hole? No, they're self-healing. Here, because we're about, oh gee whiz, two inches, you see that? Okay, for, for doing back-to-back -back coats same day, I put a little bit of extra wire because it has a tendency to fall down right here. And today, it's really, really cold, and I guess you could tell the time of year it is because I was thinking, man, I hope I have a beanie in the truck because it is ice cold until we start moving. Jay said, I got a beanie, and he brought me these, and I thought, hey, cool, they're warm too. You can tell what year it is. It's Christmas time. All right, I'm waiting on Lou to bring me some mud. We turned his little workbench into a big mud board because we can what we do is put some paper over it guys uh, put some paper over it and you can make a mud board right there so whenever Lou gets here with his mud I'm gonna scratch that whole thing right there I got myself a little handy dandy step right there just like going to the gym you ever see those guys going to the gym and do that step stuff where's our mud my brother Lou is gonna get some mud here we're gonna get going what I'm gonna do is scratch and brown this whole top then we're going to take the scaff out of here and Jay will be bottoming up right here. If my brother Lou ever gets over here with our mud. Anyway, we'll show you that when we get to that stage. Mud! Come on, man. Give me some mud. Give me some mud. What we're going to do, guys, because right here we're 7 eighths. That's groovy. Over here we're really thick. All right. Lou's going to give me some mud. Let me show you guys something. If you have some really thick areas like this, do them first. Why? Because the paper absorbs a lot of the moisture and sets it. Although today is really cold, but that's what I tell folks and I recommend. Do your, do your, always do your tops first, guys. Because when you're this thick here, you got to have time for it to set. Otherwise, Otherwise, you'll be doing this, and then the top will fall. If you lose that top seal, it's not good. So what I'm doing is, uh, I'm putting about, oh, actually about almost a wheelbarrow just right here. This part will take about, a, from, from here to here, will take about a wheelbarrow. You see that? That goes from 7H to 2 inches. Nothing we can't handle. In fact, it's, it adds some excitement to our job. Right there, that's, that's an inch thick. That's another inch thick. Get in there, guys. And here's another tip, guys. When you're doing tops, do it over and over. Squish it in there. Over and over, guys, over and over. Get it in there. What you wanna do is feel this key. That's a key, guys. Meaning not to open your door, but for the stucco to adhere so it won't keep dropping out. Also to this, this particular swimming pool trowel is great for these right here. Uh, the difference between a swimming pool trowel and a plaster trowel is plaster trowels usually 
are five inches wide. When you go with a swimming pool trowel, unfortunately, some of them are, well, most of them are three inches wide. Me, I like at least four and a half minimum to five. Why? Because with a swimming pool trowel for concrete, folks are pushing down and you don't need the width for plastering. We use more skill. Uh, and the skill is for moving it around. We gotta move it, move it, move it. Now, that's pretty thick right there, guys. But it's, it's to save some time. And actually, a lot of folks don't realize this, but to do one solid coat and keep the packs makes it stronger. Okay, so right there, I have over an inch. It dies into an inch from two to one. I'll show you another tip, guys. Okay, I'm just gonna put some of this mud here to get rid of it so I can take this scaffold out and Jay and I could really turn on the power and, and kick butt and get some of this spread out. So, I'm gonna put one last coat right here because I can reach all this. Now, any of you plasters watching what we're doing say, wow, how the heck does that stay up? That much mud? Because normally gravity would pull this and it would fall on the ground. Why isn't it doing it now? Well, I put extra wire. Now I'm gonna take it right here. Boom, that's done. And that's done and as I'm doing this guys I'm putting this trowel on edge it's not flat like this but I'm putting it on edge it opens the stucco and when you open it it can breathe where it'll stay even if it's thick because if, again if I close it like this flat this won't get any air and it could just be like cows crapping on flat rocks you'll be on the other side and say what's that sound well that's about 50 pounds falling on the ground, you'll hear it. Anyway, uh, Lou's gonna finish uh, giving me a little bit of mud here, then we can get rid of this and stand on the ground. All right, guys, I switched back to my Silver Surfer's surfboard right here. Why am I using such a gigantic trowel? Because I can, and I like them. I don't like the smaller ones. But anyway, getting back to stucco, what I did here is we put it, we put it on pretty thick uh, to feather back down. Now you guys, if you're good with your tools, you can do, do like so. And this trowel is so large, it is like a derby or a rod. But if you guys aren't very good with your tools, here's another thing you can do. Okay, well, you can use a derby, straight edge. UK, they use a lot of straight edges. Well, you wet it. Always wet your tools, guys. Wet both sides. And if you're not sure how to use a trowel to get a, a true wall, just use a derby. And babe, there we go. And if you can't reach an area, take it and just push it upward. What you can't see is I'm going up. That was funny. The homeowner was out here and he said, Gee, Kirk, how long are you guys thinking to take you? And I said, Oh, shoot, trick question. We're fast, man. Uh, I could have a couple guys out here that could take them a week and you feel like you got your money's worth or I can do it myself and I can do this in two hours. He's like, no, you can't. I said, actually, I can. So that brings me to a story since I'm already working here. And that is often we'll go to jobs and people are impressed by how fast we are. In fact, I did a job Oh, about a, three months ago. And I charged a guy $400 for some patchwork. It was, you know, it was close by my house. And I thought, no big deal. So I got a check in the mail for 200 And so I called him and I said, hey, what's that about? Uh, I did you a favor, man, at 200 bucks. And he says, well, I got an outside camera. And the outside camera says you were only there 41 minutes. <laughs> I thought, man, is this... I started laughing. I thought, wow, that's really funny. 
I said, really, what's going on? He, he says, well, I've calculated it into minutes and you make this much a minute. And I thought, for $400, are you kidding me? And I said, what about my truck? Uh, what about my 30 years experience? That truck is a $100,000 truck with all the materials on it and my 30 years. So instead of saying, gee, you guys are good, incompetent, you're saying, I'm a cheat and a fraud? That's kind of goofy. So and anyway, make a long story short, he ended up sending me the extra 200 bucks. But when you hire us, guys, don't be surprised how fast we do a job because we got a lot of time in. Which brings me to an old story that happened to me many years ago before I was married. I remember being at a club and I was dancing with somebody and this girl says, gee, you got really big shoes. And I said, well, sweetie, you know what that means. So, make a long story short, uh, we went to my house. And again, this is before I got married. And the next day, she left. And when she left, I thought, wow, it didn't even wake me up. But there was a, an envelope next to me. So I opened the envelope, and there was $20. And I thought, whoa, how about that? And then I read the, the note, and it said, buy some shoes that fit. I said, really? Ouch. Anyway, it just goes to show you that some things are not always what they seem. So you see us come to your job and we're just in and out. You got to think about other things, guys, like the amount of time we got in, the truck, and all the rest of that jazz. So thought I'd point that out because I'm killing time and I can. All right, guys, we're going to show you a couple more things while Lou is out there uh, mixing. The finish here, you can't really see it too well. It was a float finish, meaning the sand or the aggregate is brought out. Somebody dashed it, and then they didn't. That's not a skip trowel. It looks like a skip trowel. They dashed it, and then they hit it with a, uh, a trowel real lightly. How do we match that? We do a heavy water float finish, then we take our trowel. We'll show you that after. I want to point out something, guys. Uh, a lot of people call and say, hey, you're not a real plaster because you're using the wrong trowel. Here's a tip, guys. Whatever trowel works for you, use it. If a frying pan or your shoe works, use it. The idea is, yeah, it's a big trowel, but I'm used to it. I like the bigger tools. And besides, I can take, say, th say this right here. I'm killing time now because Lou got to get a mix. So you take a little trowel here, and this is uh, a 14. I consider little. You, you put it on your, your trowel like that. You don't want to fill up. You don't want to fill up the whole thing because if you do, then a lot spills off the sides when you smash it against the wall. So you put a little bit on, and this way you don't drop a whole lot. But me, I'll get rid of that and get my Congo trowel. Okay, now this big trowel, it won't spill as much as a little one. You're putting it on, and you see that? And that's a lot of mud right there. That's about 15 pounds. So you put it on. Another thing I get is, gee, why did it take the mud off of the, the bottom? Here's what I do, guys. It's called, I don't know what it's called, but I tilt and turn. What I do is I tilt, put it on my trial, turn, turn, turn. You probably can't see that, but okay, here's, here's the idea. I take some mud here. Now I turn it, and I just drop it on my trial. I turn it. I drop it on my trial. So technically for me, over the last many, many years, that's easier. Can you do this, guys? Okay, you take your mud, you put it on it, you put it on it. And can you take it off the top? Sure you can, but that, that really doesn't save a lot of time, guys. Everybody, they, it's the same thing. You, you do this, it takes forever. And then you gotta still take it off. So you're looking at four to five turns as opposed to three with a full hawk. I get, I get so many folks, they say, gee, you know, in my union, you'd be fired because you you don't pull it off the, the hawk right. I tell you guys, it's not the hawk or the trowel. It's the experience of a fella. I mean, again, it's, you find you can use a swimming pool trowel, a small trowel, a frying pan. Use whatever works for you. Don't let folks say, hey, gee, you're not this or that because you don't keep up to standards. What's the opposite of courage? It's not cowardice. It's conformity. Just because you see one guy doing it doesn't mean you got to do it, guys. Uh, 
take a chance and do whatever feels right for you. Anyway, Luce, hopefully he's have to do another mix. We've already done four wheelbarrows and this is a complete mixer full and all my sand is in the front of the truck so it's going to take them a while. I thought, since I got to do this anyway, I'll explain a few more tips. All right, guys. I did this in fast motion because I can. I'll show you guys in slow or regular motion. Say for example, oh, Kirk's the best. All right, you gotta have it that soft, guys, or a little, little harder is not gonna hurt. Once you float it, what you do is you take a trowel and you lightly hit it. It's like, okay, if you guys can't do this, I'll show you another way to do it. Okay, so that's, that's called a knockdown dash. And that matches what they have. If it was a little heavier, I'd get a dash brush, throw it on, wait a while, and knock it down. That's a knockdown dash. And lastly, for you guys who, I get, I get asked this and said this too often. Hey, Kirk, using that chuter, use this, using a big trowel is going to blow out your arm. And I say, blow out my arm? Blow it out. Anyway, that's ridiculous uh, thinking. This will make your arm stronger. Year after year after year, you get stronger and stronger and stronger. Providing you're eating right, man. you got to eat right food. You can't eat plastic crap. And for you folks who say, you, you put it on and you bend down a lot, you're gonna blow your kneecaps out. Here's the thing I saw Jason doing. Jason will lift and he'll put 245s at the end of a bar. That's like heavier than me. And when he squats, it's just like what we do. When I squat, I keep like I'm gonna sit down. Like I'm gonna sit down, guys, like that. Don't let your knees go past your toes. If you go past your toes, then you're bending wrong. Bend like you're gonna <laughs> uh, sit down. I'm gonna say something else, but bend like you're gonna sit down. Don't let your knees pass your toes. Now that'll blow out your knees. So when I'm when I'm doing this right here with the cheater, I'm not letting my knees go past my toes. Remember that because that will blow out your kneecaps. So anyway, my name is Kirk Jason on the camera. We thank you for watching and happy holidays all. By the way, folks, my dad and I are now members of Amazon Affiliates, so if you're looking to buy any of the plastering or construction tools you've seen in our videos and you want to support us in the process, you can check the links below our video or you can go to our website and get them there. If you have any other questions that for tools we don't have linked, email us direct and we'll respond to you then. Once again, folks, we thank you for watching and I really enjoy all your comments. If you guys like this video, please click the like button down below. And also, if you enjoy what we do, subscribe to our channel so we can keep making these videos for you. My name is Kirk. And Jay. We thank you for watching. And from the entire Giordano family, we'll, we'll see you on the next one.